Achalasia is a primary esophageal motility disorder characterized by the absence of esophageal peristalsis and impaired relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter in response to swallowing. In about 50% of patients, the lower esophageal sphincter is hypertensive. These abnormalities cause a functional obstruction at the gastroesophageal junction in these patients. Here is an image of a barium swallow study in a patient with achalasia. The esophagus is dilated due to the stasis of barium-containing meal, and the lower esophagus has a bird's beak appearance, which is characteristic for achalasia. Human esophagus has two sphincters at its proximal and distal ends to control the passage of food particles from the oral cavity up to the stomach. They are upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter respectively. Esophageal sphincters usually remain closed at rest. As food reach the sphincters, they open up to permit the passage of food. And once the food pass through the sphincters, they close down. Thus, the main function of these sphincters is to prevent the backflow of food particles. Now let's discuss about the etiology and pathogenesis of achalasia. The exact cause of achalasia has not yet been identified. However, there is some evidence that it is an autoimmune disorder. The contraction and relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter is controlled by the vagus nerve through excitatory and inhibitory interneurons. When excitatory interneuron is stimulated, the sphincter contracts, and when inhibitory interneuron is stimulated, the sphincter relaxes. In normal individuals, the function of lower esophageal sphincter is controlled by a balance between the nerve signals through these excitatory and inhibitory interneurons. However, in achalasia, there is a deficiency of inhibitory interneurons, which leads to impaired relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. Signs and symptoms of achalasia include the following. Dysphagia, or difficulty in swallowing, which is the most common symptom. Regurgitation. Chest pain. Heartburn. And weight loss. Now let's discuss about the diagnosis of achalasia. A diagnosis of achalasia should be considered in patients with relevant symptoms after an endoscopy does not reveal a mechanical obstruction or an inflammatory cause. Barium follow-through and esophageal manometry are the commonly used tests to diagnose achalasia. Laboratory tests are not useful in diagnosing achalasia. Finally, let's come to the treatment. Initial therapy should be either with graded pneumatic dilation, an endoscopic technique to open up the closed lower esophageal sphincter, or with laparoscopic surgical myotomy, also known as Heller's myotomy, which is a surgical procedure to cut and open the hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter. Patients who are not fit to undergo surgery are treated with botulinum toxin injection. Botulinum toxin is a muscle relaxant which is commonly used in cosmetic procedures. Pharmacologic therapy can be used for patients who are not undergoing pneumatic dilation or surgery and who have failed to respond to botulinum toxin therapy. Nitric oxide and calcium channel blockers are the commonly used drugs in these patients.